Hi, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on the more muscular looking heart or ventricular hypertrophy. Now a lot of people have contacted me and said, look, you know, uh, can you please talk to me about ventricular hypertrophy? My doctor says I've got this thing called LVH. What does it mean? So I thought I'd do a quick video on this to try and explain it to you. The first thing to understand is that the heart is a muscle, okay? If I show you uh, that this is the muscle, this is the heart here, uh, you have the left ventricle and the right ventricle. And the reason the heart is uh, muscular is because it has a big job to do. It has the job of pumping blood all around our body. So if the heart is having to work harder for any reason over a prolonged period of time, then the heart will become more muscular like any other muscle. If I work my bicep harder, my bicep will get bigger in size. Similarly, with the heart, if the heart has to work harder to pump blood around, it becomes more muscular. If the left ventricle is working harder, the left ventricle will become more muscular and that increased muscularity is called hypertrophy. The heart doesn't get bigger, it's just getting more muscular. And in fact, because the muscles are getting bigger, the cavity size actually gets smaller within the heart. If the left ventricle is finding it difficult to pump blood out, then it's, you've developed LVH or left ventricular hypertrophy. If the right ventricle is having difficulty pumping blood out, then you develop right ventricular hypertrophy. Now the questions then arise as to why does it get more hard, hard to pump blood out? Well, there's two main reasons. There's lots of reasons, but the two main reasons are this. Number one, high blood pressure, a condition called high blood pressure, hypertension. High blood pressure means that the heart has to work harder to get the blood out. That's what it means. The pressure in the blood vessels, which are up here, the pressure over here is high, and therefore the heart is having to struggle to try and pump blood out. So high blood pressure is one of the most common causes for a more muscular looking heart. It doesn't mean that if you have high blood pressure today and otherwise it's normal, you'll develop it. No, but if it's been going on for several years, then the compensatory mechanism uh, that happens within the heart is that the heart becomes more muscular. In fact, Anything that increases the pressure in the aorta, the blood vessel that takes blood around the body, will cause this. So if you had a narrowing in your aorta down in your stomach, this is something called coarctation of the aorta where you get narrowing for congenital reasons, that will cause high blood pressure and cause the heart to become more muscular. If you had narrowings in your blood vessels in your kidneys, for example, then that will also increase the amount of pressure that the heart that has to pump against cause high blood pressure, cause left ventricular hypertrophy. So high blood pressure is by far the commonest cause of left ventricular hypertrophy or a more muscular heart. The second cause is aortic stenosis. This is a valve here that you can see where uh, the, when the, the left ventricle is pumping blood, it has to pump blood against this valve, open the valve, and then the blood goes out. If the um, valve for whatever reason starts becoming tighter and often it does so as we get older so that the valve will become more and more narrowed and calcified and it makes it more difficult for the valve to open then the left ventricle has to exert a ton more pressure to try and get the blood out and that will also cause left ventricular hypertrophy. On the right side, on the right ventricle, the right ventricle, remember, is trying to pump blood to the lungs. So if you have lung disease, again, much harder for the heart to pump blood into the lungs will cause right ventricular hypertrophy. Remember, there's another valve, the pulmonary valve, which is here. This is the pulmonary valve here. Again, if the right ventricle is struggling to try and pump blood because this is narrowed, this will cause right ventricular hypertrophy. So those are the cause of a more muscular heart. Now, there are other conditions in which you can get a more muscular heart. Uh, athletes can get a slightly more muscular heart, but by no means is it particularly, it's not very muscular. You know, they just get a little bit more muscularity because they're athletic. Some ethnic populations like Afro-Caribbeans can have a more muscular looking heart. But when you have something like high blood pressure or a narrowed aortic valve over here, then you get a huge amount of muscularity. What do I mean by increased muscularity? Well, the normal kind of thickness of these um, walls here, the muscle, is about 
uh, one centimeter, so one to 1.2 centimeters at most, no more than that. If you're an athlete or if you're Afro-Caribbean, you're looking at maybe 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, something like that, but no more than that. If you have high blood pressure um, or you have aortic stenosis, it can easily go up to two centimeters. And at that point, we're thinking, okay, well, there's something making the heart work really hard here, and this is why it's happening. There is another cause why you can have a more muscular looking heart. Remember, whenever, you know, if you walk along the street and you see a really muscular person walking towards you, there's two things that tend to go on in my head. The first is obviously that this person works out really hard and that's why his muscles are big. That's the traditional cause of left ventricular hypertrophy. But of course, the other thing is maybe he's injecting something into his muscles and that's why he looks so much more muscular. So in that sense, you can get this condition called infiltration of the heart muscle where abnormal protein, abnormal substances can actually be deposited within the heart muscle and make it look thicker. Common things are uh, things like um, a condition called amyloidosis. Uh, amyloidosis is a condition which can cause uh, abnormal protein to be deposited within the heart and the heart therefore looks much thicker. It looks more muscular. It's not stronger, but it just looks more muscular. Another condition which is quite rare is something called Fabry's disease. This can also cause it. There are a few inherited conditions which can also cause the heart to look more muscular. In particular, there's a condition called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is an inherited condition. There's a genetic mutation in which the heart muscle itself is abnormal and therefore the heart looks a lot more muscular. There is a difference. So in patients who have high blood pressure or they have aortic stenosis, the muscularity tends to be concentric because the whole of the left ventricle is having to work harder all of it will look more muscular. On the other hand, however, in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, because the muscle itself is abnormal, it tends to be more noticeable in one area over other bits. So that's another clue. When we look at a muscular heart, we think, okay, well, is it symmetrical or asymmetrical? If it's symmetrical, it's more likely to be uh, something like high blood pressure or a narrowed heart valve. If it's asymmetric, then we worry about things like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Why is it important to know if someone has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy as a cause of their uh, muscular heart? Because this is a condition that can be inherited and therefore the person who suffers from it could have passed it on to their child. And that's why it's important to know. The next question is, well, how do you diagnose this condition? The first thing is a lot of people do a chest x-ray. Well, you don't pick this up on a chest x-ray because remember the heart is more muscular, it's not bigger. When you're doing an x-ray, you're looking at a shadow. So if you had a big heart, the shadow would look bigger. But if you have a more muscular heart, the shadow looks the same size because the muscularity is inwards. And uh, so a chest x-ray does not diagnose this condition. An ECG is a better way to pick it up. It's not absolutely 100% accurate, but it can give you a clue. So in an ECG, what you're doing is you're measuring electrical impulses which are going through the heart muscle. If you have lots of heart muscle, a more muscular heart, you will have bigger ECG complexes. And that gives your doctor a clue that there may be left ventricular hypertrophy going on. Just because you have it doesn't mean you definitely have it. Or, um, and just because you don't have it doesn't mean you don't have it. But if you have it, it certainly warrants further investigation to confirm the presence of a more muscular heart or left ventricular hypertrophy. The best, the most uh, accurate, uh, easily available test, the gold standard test at the moment is echocardiography, ultrasound of the heart, where you can actually visualize these walls and you can measure the thickness of the heart muscle. That is the test that absolutely confirms it. If the echocardiogram doesn't show left ventricular hypertrophy, you don't have left ventricular hypertrophy. If it does, then you do have it. An MRI scan is probably even more accurate, but an MRI scan is not as easily available. Now the question, the next question is, why is it important? Why is all this important to know whether you have a more muscular heart? Well, there are several reasons. The first thing is it tells you that your heart is having to work harder than it should. And therefore, it points to the fact that your heart is not, your body is not happy, your heart is having to work harder. And it therefore should encourage everyone to try and explore why their body is not happy. For a lot of people, it can be simple things like weight. You know, if you carry a lot of weight, your blood pressure goes up and that can cause the heart to work harder. So trying to identify that and losing the weight is an excellent idea. For some people, some people may have something called sleep apnea. 
And sleep apnea is a condition that one in five people now have. They don't even, they don't know about it, but they basically stop breathing at night. When they stop breathing at night, they have to sort of wake up to try and breathe. And so this is a very stressful thing and causes high blood pressure, again, which can cause left ventricular hypertrophy. Of course, it's very important to do the echocardiogram to look at the aortic valve, to make sure the aortic valve is not narrowed because if the valve is narrowed and that is stopping the blood from getting through, then you need to fix that. So that's another reason why it's important to investigate left ventricular hypertrophy. It's important to investigate what the cause is for the increased pressure on the heart. The other reason left ventricular hypertrophy is important is, number one, hypertrophied heart, a muscular heart, inherently becomes stiffer. So when the heart is, uh, when we're born, our hearts are nice and, you know, compliant, somewhere between a ballerina and a bodybuilder. But as you develop hypertrophy, you're moving towards a bodybuilder heart, you know, a very strong heart, but not as easy to relax. The problem with that is if the heart is not relaxing as easily, the heart will not get enough time to fill with as much blood because it doesn't fill with as much blood, it's pumping less blood around the body. And that then is noticed by the body, which will then uh, try and the body will think, oh, we're not getting as much blood here. What's going on? Let's try and constrict all our blood vessels to try and increase the pressure so that we get the blood. And actually, by increasing the pressure, they're making things worse. So the heart is now having to work against a higher pressure. And so the left ventricular hypertrophy gets worse. The other problem is at some point, the hypertrophy gets to the point where the muscle is so much that it out starts outstripping its own blood supply. Because it's outstripping its own blood supply, it starts weakening. So if you leave left ventricular hypertrophy over a prolonged period of time, the muscle will start weakening. And that's really important. And that's why it's important to control left ventricular hypertrophy early on. Finally, the thing to say is that the muscle itself, because it's getting, you know, particularly with conditions where you have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, where the muscle is abnormal, but also in a more hypertrophied muscle, because inherently you're not going to get as much through this more muscle. You've got a limited blood supply. Bits of the, the muscle may die without, you know, being overtly obvious. And that can then propagate heart rhythm disturbances. So the muscle, it, because it's inherently sort of more diseased, can misbehave and develop heart rhythm disturbances. So all heart rhythm disturbances are more common in patients who have left ventricular hypertrophy. Those are the reasons uh, that it's important uh, to A, identify and B, treat. How do you treat it? Well, you treat the underlying cause. Uh, there are the lifestyle modifications, good nutrition, good exercise, avoidance of smoking, um, good sleep patterns, really important, minimizing stress, that's really important. If you're doing all those things, and let's say you have high blood pressure and your blood pressure hasn't come down with lifestyle changes, then it is a good idea to take medications to lower the blood pressure, because by lowering the blood pressure, you're minimizing the extra pressure on the heart. It's very interesting that in terms of studies, there are lots of medications that lower the blood pressure, but only some medications which are really effective at reversing this left ventricular hypertrophy, which you can reverse. You can reverse it to a certain extent if you tackle it early enough. So we have lots of different medications that we use uh, for blood pressure. Uh, we use beta blockers, we use diuretics, we use calcium antagonists, we use uh, angiotensin receptor blockers or ACE inhibitors. The best medications in terms of not only controlling the blood pressure, but actually being most effective in regressing this hypertrophy are angiotensin blockers. And these are the ones that end in artan, so losartan, valsartan, telmisartan, candesartan. They're the most effective medications at controlling your blood pressure and regressing the left ventricular hypertrophy. It's followed by ACE inhibitors, which end with ill ramipril, perindopril, enalapril, lisinopril, trandalopril. These are the second best medications. Third, calcium antagonists. These are end in peens, so nifedipine, amlodipine, lecarnidipine. They're third best. 
The ones that are not so good are beta blockers, which end in all, atenolol, bisoprolol. So they're okay with controlling the blood pressure, but they don't regress the left ventricular hypertrophy. And that's why doctors don't use them as first line anymore. And also the diuretics are not as good. And these end in ide, uh, bendroflozide, indapamide, thiazide, hydrochlorothiazide. So I hope you found this useful. This is a little run through left ventricular hypertrophy, why it happens and how you go about, uh, why it's important and how you go about treating it. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to um, hear any comments and uh, I'm as always very thankful for all that you do for me. Thank you so much.